Hello, this is Rocket Man Dan, and today we're going to be travelling to Duna. But first, I'm just going to look into the R&D department to grab a new piece of scientific equipment. Here we go. Let's just scroll on over. Now, I want this, you see. I want the uh, double C seismic accelerometer. So, but first to get that, we have to unlock these extra solar panels. Not even that we need them. But I would like that piece of scientific equipment. Okay, let's go to the VAB. I'll just show you what we're working with. That's right, we're going to be using the same ship as we did for the MUN and for Minmus. The only additional parts we're going to be using are a couple of radial parachutes. We're going to put that on twin symmetry and just attach it to these radial tanks here. And also, we're going to turn up the altitude at which they fully deploy all the way to 5000. It will give us plenty of time to drop then. Also we're going to add that piece of scientific equipment we unlocked, the seismic accelerometer. I'm just going to place it here just so it's always with us and I'm going to put that in an action group on the brakes just like all the others. There we go, log seismic data. Now that's us, ready to go to Duna, land and come back. Okay then, I'll see you in orbit. Okay, so we've made it into orbit of Kerbin. Let's have a look in the map screen using L1 and R1 and zoom out using L2 and have a look at the solar system. Now what we want to do is set Duna as target with X and plan our encounter with Duna. If you imagine that Kerbin is at 3 o'clock, you want Duna to be somewhere about here, about 2 o'clock. Or, if you imagine Kerbin is at 0 degrees, you want Duna to be at about 44 degrees, like on this image on screen. Or, if you want to be really accurate, like I do, you can use this website and it will tell you the exact time and date when to leave. I'll try to leave a link in the description. Now, we're going to go into the tracking station to fast forward time to the time I need to leave. Okay, so fast forwarded time now to day 238 of year one. So I'm going to go into my map screen and plan a maneuver for Duna. Now when I plan my maneuver, what I want to do is have my trajectory going all the way around here like this and meet up with Duna somewhere about here. And to do that, I want to plan an encounter on the light side of Kerbin. Okay. So, let's see, let's, um, let's put it somewhere about here. We can always move it around. Add a maneuver just by pressing X on the orbit. Cycle through with R1 and hold forwards on the left analog stick to push that prograde out. I'm reckoning we need about a thousand meters per second to get out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. No, it's 966 just to get out. And I'm going to zoom back out and have a look what that does for us. I'm going to cycle back through again with R1 and see what happens when I move that maneuver around. There we go, I'm going to give it a touch more prograde. Cycle through again. And another little bit more of a prograde burn. And we should see our, our encounters. Now do you see there? Just here on the left, our closest approach is 335 kilometers away. Let's see what happens when we move that around. That's further away. I'm pulling downwards on the left analog stick. I'm getting closer. A little bit. Oh, something seems to be happening. There we go. There's an encounter. And that's good enough for us. So what I'm going to do is just activate stability assist because this also has a way of finalizing the maneuver. There we go. Go back to my ship and my maneuver is in 32 minutes. So what I'm going to do is just turn over to my maneuver node 
Now I estimate this to be, I don't know, somewhere about 2 minutes 30. Shouldn't be too long. So what I'm going to do is fast forward to that point. Zoom back in here. Oh, there we are. We can see where the manoeuvre is. And that's in minus 31 minutes. Okay then. Uh, let's fast forward this. Okay. Let's just put a hold on it there. And get over to that manoeuvre node. Want to try and stick to this as close as possible. Even though Jeb's now got three stars, he still hasn't got manoeuvre hold. We have got a few others, normal and anti-normal, and radial and anti-radial, which will be nice, come and useful, but it's that manoeuvre hold we're really hoping for. That'll be the thing that really helps out. Okay, let's just fast forward this again. Okay, let's start burning. That camera wobble there means we've exited Kerbin's sphere of influence. Well, our predicted path has anyway. For these last few metres per second, I'm going to focus on Duna and have a look what our path is going to be like. So far, we haven't actually gotten an encounter with Duna, so I'm going to lock to prograde and just tap slowly on the L1 button and up. Just give it a little bit of thrust. It's very easy to overshoot here but it's also very easy to correct. So we'll just give it a little bit of thrust see what's happening. Also if you're unsure you can zoom back out and have a look what your encounter is looking like there as well. Just give it a touch more thrust. There we go. I'm going to cancel that manoeuvre now. If you see this this isn't you know this isn't too bad. We'll do a mid course correction, bring that more in line with Duna and try and get an equatorial orbit if we can. So I'm going to focus back on my vessel, I'm going to click in R3. There I am. I'm just going to tap on here and escape Kerbin's sphere of influence. Okay, looks like I had a little run in there with Minmus. So I'm just going to see if I can adjust that again. To focus on Duna. And see what things are going to be like. At the minute, we have got a closest approach of 88 kilometers. Well, 88,000 kilometers. So let's just give it a touch of prograde again. That is bringing it closer. There we go, we can see our new path intersecting again. You have to be very careful when you're doing this because a small burn can have a huge difference. There we go, that'll do fine. It means we're still going to actually intercept Duna. And we'll just do a mid-course correction to bring that into an equatorial line. Now, we're nearly in to interplanetary space where you can do some more science. There we go, we're in interplanetary space now. I'm going to just collect some science and then I'll warp us on to where I want to do a mid-course correction. Okay, that's all my science done. Go back into the map screen. What I want to do is warp us to about midway somewhere in between where I am and where I'm going to. So I can do a mid-course correction. So I'm going to warp here. There we go, that time warp's complete now. And I want to plan a manoeuvre somewhere on my orbit path. Very hard to get close to where you actually want to be. But that's quite good, 9 minutes and 46 seconds away. So add manoeuvre. I'm just going to focus on Duna. Zoom right in using R2. I'm going to cycle through my options. 
there we go and now cycle through these options with L1 and I want to be going normal which is forwards on the D so normal I'm just going to just the smallest touches it doesn't take much see how much it's brought it up won't take much at all I'm going to try and be aiming for a periapsis of somewhere about 60,000 because Duna's atmosphere extends to 50,000 meters so 60,000's about in the safe zone leaves us nice and close as well oh I give it just a touch too much there what I actually wanted to do was cycle through to prograde just to bring it down well, these analog sticks are super sensitive so I'm just going to cycle through to prograde see if I can bring that in closer oh too far say I mean it's only just the smallest of nudges there we go. I'm going to click square on my periapsis just so I can see what's happening and just try ever so gently just to push it forward and no 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 joy that time either I mean it really is it's just points of a meter per second okay I'll just give it a touch more normal oh I mean the tiniest touch there we go try and bring it equatorial if you look at Ike here Duna's moon it orbits very close so you've got to watch out for an Ike encounter as well but it also happens to orbit at an, at an equatorial plane so like I said I'm just going to try and give it a touch more prograde just to see if I can bring that into about 60,000 there we go 54,000 took quite a bit of patience that did so I'm going to turn back on my SAS and I'm going to turn over to the manoeuvre the distances involved here are so massive even this will be the right time to start burning but what I'm going to do though is turn down my thrust limiter again because like I say it's such a small burn that we don't want to make any overburns here so I'm going to gently tickle the throttle holding L1 and just tapping up there we go we've got a nice estimated periapsis on Duna of 61,948 meters yeah I think that'll do us just fine if you just look just there you can just you can keep see it changing and that's just computing errors there so what we want to do we want to warp to just inside Duna's sphere of influence but we'll get that started off first just so the PlayStation can't mess us about too much there we go we're officially in Duna's sphere of influence with a periapsis of 61,000 nearly 62,000 let's see if we can actually see it oh there it is just there can you see it that little dot over there we can't even see Ike yet what I'm going to do now is just do my science whilst I'm high over Duna there we go always remember turn on your SAS when you get back in your vehicle I'm just going to lock it to retrograde for now because we'll be needing to do quite a large retrograde manoeuvre but actually first let's turn that engine back up because if not it'll probably be like a three hour burn there we go let's plan a manoeuvre at Duna shall we X somewhere on the orbit add a manoeuvre R1 to cycle through and pull downwards on the left analog stick you can see that orbit path getting more and more curved 
as we add more retrograde and there we go snapped into position I'm just going to try and get that circular I might not do all this in one burn I might do it in a couple of burns because it's more fuel efficient to do your burns at periapsis which is the lowest part of your orbit if you're trying to bring in your apoapsis at the minute it says it's a 25 minute burn but we know that's not true I'm just going to warp it a little bit closer and then I can warp to manoeuvre I estimate it to be, I don't know, somewhere about a minute long burn so what I'm going to do is just give my engine just a little bit of thrust just to test that out a minute 17 it's saying at the moment so split that in half that's what 30, 5 and let's say 3.5 about a 38 second burn before my manoeuvre as you can probably tell I'm not great at maths <laughs> There we go, time to start burning. There we go, the periapsis has started moving now. So what I'm going to do is just plan another manoeuvre at the periapsis, just to try and circularise this orbit. Won't be a big burn at all, one or two seconds. There we go, perfect, just a two second burn. So let's fast forward to that manoeuvre. Okay, we're at the manoeuvre now. Let's start burning. Absolutely perfect. Here we are, beautiful. A nice orbit of doing it and we've got plenty of fuel left, don't worry about that. Okay, I've been Rocketman Dan, thanks very much for watching. In the next episode we'll be landing and returning back from Duna. Bye bye.